Hey guys, I just wanted to show you a piece of gold that I found. Uh, it was in a, a pile of what I think is going to be turned in or scrap. But this is a classic, a Hewlett Packard 3611 Alpha. Uh, this is a regulated DC power supply, but it's got a couple cool trick features. Things that I think they've kind of gone away from over the years. But uh, I wanted to show it to you guys just because... It is repairable. If you find these, you can find all the schematics. You can find all the parts and circuit descriptions for them. You can still fix these. And it's not a very powerful power supply. You can see that it goes 0 to 20 volts at 1.5 amps. Or it can do come on, uh, 0 to 35 volts at 0.85 amps. So it's not very powerful. But it doesn't need to be for most things that we're going to do. Most of the time, I'm probably going to leave it in the uh, the 1.5 amp range. So that's with the button out. So first off, let's go over how old this guy is. You can see uh, build date on the Transformers 12 of 91. So this is most likely a 1992 model number. And you can see that it has line on off. So... As soon as I seen the line button instead of power or the symbol, uh, you know, the line or the circle. As soon as I seen that it said line, I was like, oh, this guy's old. Let's check it out. You see on the output stage, you've got plus or minus, which are red, and then ground, which is black, which is odd. It's really odd. And you can see that it says 240 volts DC max to ground. Which is odd, because uh, any modern day one is going to be, you know, red, black, and green. But it is what it is. Um, all of the potentiometers feel really good. You can hear the wipers. The wipers sound really good yet. So uh, I wanted to open this guy up and check all the electrolytic capacitors and check to make sure there's no loose components before I plug it in because... Any of these old devices, they could potentially catch fire. It's always best to open them up and check them out. And one of the cool things about these old Hewlett Packards is that it's all held together by these press-on end caps. So the front face is an end cap, and that is the rear end cap, and then there's the cover. They're all plastic. They just kind of snap on. Use a flat blade screwdriver to pop them at the corners. There's these little indents. Super easy. And compared to a lot of things, the plastic is not that fragile because at this age, a lot of uh, polymers get brittle and I'm not seeing it on this. So either this one has been taken very good care of or uh, Hewlett Packard just made some really good products. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside and I will walk you guys through a little bit of what's going on according to the schematic. Now there's really interesting things going on with this there's three different stages. So you have one that's your display driver. You've got one that's a reference and bias power supply. And then you have your main driver power supply. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on inside the device. Uh, you can see the AC mains comes in in the back, comes all the way up to your switch. So instead of this being a soft start, this is a uh, hard main switch. And then it goes back and it goes into the transformer where it splits off on the bottom of the transformer into some of your different stages. So this little guy over here, uh, if you've ever watched my videos before, I'll tell you that if you see large capacitors, those usually indicate your DC rails. This has three different sections where it rectifies... AC to DC. So only AC comes through transformers, but then you have to have multiple different stages in order to rectify it. And this is your main bridge rectifier. And this one here is the miniature rectifier for your display power supply. So it comes in off these taps, goes through here, and then it comes down here which is your display interface cable. You can see it? So there it is. 
then this in the middle of the board, this is going to be your reference and bias supply. So you have that little uh, bridge rectifier right here. Then it comes down and you have a plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts, which is really interesting. And then you have a five volt voltage regulator right over here. So you've got five volts, you've got negative 12 volts, you've got positive 12 volts, and then you have all of your different miniature pots for adjusting those. Now, one of the ways that I was told in the manual to, hold on, as soon as I get my stuff together, one of the ways I was told to um, test this guy and to calibrate it is you're supposed to get a load resistor and you put it between the plus and the minus. You can take the voltage and your resistance and you can measure current. So uh, what you're going to do is you have from one to the other your resistor and then you're going to measure the voltage across the resistor itself and the voltage drop is going to allow you to calibrate your device, which is really interesting. These, uh, obviously, you're going to want to send out to get calibrated, but it does tell you in the uh, service manual how you can calibrate it yourself just using a known value resistor and your multimeter, which is already calibrated. So that is these guys right here. Very cool. So I'll show you guys how to read exactly what's going on. So first off, if you have no display, it's not turning on. Uh, you're obviously going to first check your display power supply just to make sure it's on. So that would be this one right here. I already pointed it out with uh, CR13. It's this guy right over here. So you want to make sure that you got DC coming off of that going into this guy and that's going to come down to here. There's a test point right there, TP9, which you can see right here. You've got your test points 9 and 10. That's going to uh, give you real good access. So you can see 9 right there and 10 is right there. So that's going to give you real good access for checking your voltage, coming off to make sure that your main display is getting power. Then this is your reference and bias supply, which is really cool that they give me the circuit diagrams. I don't have to guess what's going on. So you can see right here, I've got U2 and U6. Let me come down here. As I said, uh, you got your plus 12 volts, U2. Right there's U6. And what these guys are going to do is they're going to give you your plus 12 volts, negative 12 volts. And then right here, coming off the middle, it's really interesting. I think that says plus five. So uh, the reason I'm pointing this guy out, and maybe you guys can help me with this, is because down here at your driver, you see these guys right here, Q1 and Q3, these big honking guys back here, these transistors, that's Q1 and Q3. And these guys work in tandem with this little guy right here, this Q2. And Q2, is really interesting. I had to look for a little bit to find it. So Q2 comes down here and it's part of your driver network and it takes that reference signal, that reference voltage, and you can see it's got a negative 12 volt on one leg and it's got this reference voltage on the other side. I'm really curious how they use that reference to control it. It's something that I'm gonna have to do some more reading on, but uh, really neat. Right here is your drivers, uh, Q1 and Q3, which are the ones I showed you back there. So uh, one of the things I wanted to point out to you guys that if you seem to have your voltages up here on these two, this one here, you can check across your bridge rectifier. You have a TP4 and uh, TP2, which, interestingly are right up here in the front you see that so you can check to make sure that your voltage coming off of your bridge boop, boop, is okay and then you can check after your uh, series pass transistors right here with tp3 and tp3 is right up here so you would reference on tp4 Check TP2, which is before your uh, drivers, 
and then you would check TP3 right here in the middle of the board. And this is close to your output stage. So that is basically verifying that these are doing their job. So you can see it on the schematic. So you're basically testing from here to here, and then you're testing here to here, right? So that's before the drivers, after the drivers. And uh, then you can see that there are a couple different amplifiers on here. So you have a voltage error amplifier and you have a current error amplifier. The current error, uh, error amplifier is also the monitor. So this little chip right here helps you adjust the current when you depress the button on the front. Bam. So it adjusts the current and then it uh, monitors and adds and you know modifies your current. So what a cool little device. I'm glad that they still have the schematics. I've checked it all out. It looks like it's good. And now guys, I'm going to plug it in and maybe put it to work on one of our workbenches if the values are calibrated correctly. Now something like this we would just use for troubleshooting. Um, it's not used for calibrating at all. Um, you're going to use a known value if you're going to do calibrations, but still it's a treasure. It's a relatively good condition and I'm glad that we found it and saved it from the scrap heap. Thanks for watching guys. I'm taking a look at it and just powering this little motor. You can see I'm at 12.3, 12.3. I don't even know why I'm surprised that it's that accurate, but it's working.